second week, and we're certainly looking forward to having him back here. Um, on this week's episode, uh, the uh, the focus is going to be uh, on, uh, as always, on, on queer, pagan, and metaphysical spirituality. But today is a very special uh, day because we're welcoming uh, Reverend Robert Ray, the, the co-founder of the Center for Inner Wisdom, um, the, uh, the founder of the uh, Zero Point Foundation, a gifted energy worker and healing facilitator, and that's just within the scope of metaphysics. Uh, Robert is also the author of uh, uh, Return to Zero Point and, and a number of other workshops and, and, uh, uh, and, and lectures, and he's going to be talking with us about his experience as one of the nation's uh, most respected, most uh, uh, most dedicated um, experts on vital life force energy, and he'll tell us a little bit about what that is. He's going to share how this uh, this this amazing process, um, which he and his team provided no cost to some people who have absolutely nowhere else to turn, um, is really radically changing people's lives. So, Robert, I want to uh, uh, first off welcome you. And uh, and apologize that uh, uh, your your introduction that we're only a forty five minute uh, 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 show, and if I would have gone into all of your accolades in and out of metaphysics, the show would be almost over. So, uh, welcome to the show, and and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, about the uh, first of all about the Center for Inner Wisdom, and uh, then we'll get into a conversation about VL uh, FE. Well, it you know began years ago. John Michael, after uh, I had finished a period of psychotherapy, I went through intense, deep psychotherapy. Uh, I emerged from that feeling not completely healed. I improved, yes, definitely, but not completely healed. As you know, through any process of psychotherapy, so much of the burden of healing is within self. And I was looking and looking and looking for spiritual help online. And a voice came to me. And the voice instructed me to close everything down and open a document and it would begin to dictate. And so I got vignettes in periods of time that I compiled together into a book and it made it very, very difficult to edit that book because of the way I received my messages. But it was me that was at fault, certainly not my guides. I had never had a psychic or channeling experience before, so I didn't know how to receive well. Um, we got that out, we got it done, and then got it redone again. and. The book circulated the world, and it was translated into other languages. And then, as I began to channel to teach my classes on the topic of the book, which was for your audience, it was all about an advanced system of Ho'oponopono. And I really didn't even know what to call it, because it was unlike any system that was out there a la Hugh Len or the doctor from Hawaii that was involved with him. It was a little bit deeper. It was a little bit more progressive. Anyway, I continued and improved over time with my channeling, with my listening. And I kept hearing, you are a healer. Well, yeah, I accept it. I'm a healer. I'm a healer. I'm helping people heal with this message of how to heal their emotions. Well, that's not quite what they meant. I'm a healer with my hands. It took me years to appreciate and understand what they were trying to get through to me. You know, my brother, we've been friends for a very long time. You know I'm thick-headed. You know I don't heal. <laughs> That's why we've been friends for a very long time. <laughs> um, but I, um, I finally, finally got it. And boom, this center, 
the physical place where we have our center was literally thrown into my lap. All obstacles were taken away and we contracted for more space than I could ever envision using. Now we don't have enough space, but that's a story for a later date. And we began the teaching, we began hands-on healing, and then within approximately 13 months ago, they handed me another system to use to heal. And when I was done, they said, believe it or not, you still don't know how to hear that well, so we're going to send you off to Europe. And you're going to finish this education because you need protocols now. And what I came down with was a system of approximately 25 different protocols to a basic system of healing with the hands. Where we first go in and open the aura and begin to heal the skin of the aura. And then we place hands over our clients' heads front and back, thyroid and heart. And then we begin cleaning the energy away from them. After we have put in, in a phase that I call warming, for about two minutes and minutes on each site, we begin to scrape away old congested energy. And what I've come to realize with time is that the cells of our body must constantly respirate energy. The energy enters the cell and becomes matter. And when its life is expended, it leaves as energy and takes in new energy to become matter. <coughs> So that warming phase begins to take the congestion out of the cells so that they open up and they can release the energy. And once they do open up and become less congested, then we scrape away the old used energy and we put in new and we balance each area. We start at the head, we begin at the feet. The very first time I ever worked on a breast cancer, on a woman, I literally saw the tumor, which was visible to my eyes from the outside of the skin. I saw it beginning to reach outward to pull the energy back that I was taking away from the tumor. You think about it. Cancer is only an energy. It's a broken energy. It's a... Uh, it's like a computer holding malware. We have to take that nastiness out. But it's really not nasty. Energy is only energy. It doesn't have a nature of good or bad. It's just energy. And it can neither be created nor can it be destroyed. It already exists. We may fire up generators but the energy was already in existence before we started to spin a motor to manifest it to move through wires. The energy is just that. It's energy. It has a nature of purity unto itself. It can get old, it can get stale, but when it is actually outside of the human body, and in the sunlight, it is the light of the sun that purifies it, renews it. It is the, the, the geomagnetic waves that come from the core of the earth that renew and regenerate it. The synergy between the energy that comes from the core of the earth and the power of the sun will make old energy like new again. You know, that that makes so much sense and is 
one of the one of the questions that that I just got offline um, is, and, and let me just say, folks, if you have questions, go ahead and, and uh, comment during the program or after the program, and uh, and we will uh, respond to you. But uh, this this message came in um, offline from somebody who I, I don't know if why they couldn't comment, um, but they said, uh, it, can can you explain to me um, what this has to do with the um, pagan spiritual path? And and so. I think this is. I, I think you really touched on um, what I think is a core idea of Hermetic philosophy: as above, so below. Um, we're, we're talking about homeostasis, and we're talking about restoring the, the the balance of the universe, of the cosmos. And as you said, there's no. I, I love that you said there's no um, bad energy. That there's there's simply energy. There's no good energy. There's no bad energy. And that at the um, foundation of, of your work, um, which is is based on on uh, the, the the title of which or or the name that we we speak of it, um, refers to something that uh, Albert Einstein said uh, back in in 1919. He said that there exists below the um, atomic level, at the subatomic and below the subatomic level, a vast reservoir of unquantifiable energy. And he called that the zero point. And so for, for us as metaphysicians, um, we may call that source, we may call that the god or goddess, we may call that um, chi, we may call it a, anything that, that we choose, but it's this, this um, non-dualistic, unified um, source of all things. So, so the, when, when people come to you and they say, Robert, I've got um, something that's uh, that's causing me pain. I've got something that's um, uh, the doctor told me I have a disease, or the doctor said uh, I, I'm you know not long for this earth. Um, what what is your response to that person um, on on that holistic level? Because I think that's what what we uh, the the majority of our our viewers are um, witches self self uh, um, described as as witches or or mages sorcerers. Uh, metaphysicians, and every single day we're dealing with this energy, whether we call it that or not. Um, you're doing something very unique and very specific because, and 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 to its credit, you're getting tremendous results. So could you talk a little bit about how that relates to the spiritual path? Uh, I know at the center you have uh, um, a wide variety of, of metaphysical practitioners and, and tarot readers and psychics, uh, mediums, uh, but but tell us a little bit how that that tie in um, to the work that you guys do, and then I want to talk about some of the other work that you do there at the center. Um, where, where does that come in in the bigger picture? Okay, first of all, let me go back to how does my healing relate to the pagan world, the Wiccan world, and so on and so forth. First of all, my basic philosophy in life is to never do harm. And always the good Wiccan practitioner will always be slanted towards the good life, the good blessing, the good desire to bring about peace, harmony, fruitfulness. Second of all, I said two very important things, the core of the earth and the power of the sun. And as I begin to understand energy, because I work with so much of it, I am beginning to understand the divinity that lies not only in myself, but also in the elements that surround us. I bless the earth. I love her. I bless the sun. I love him. I bless the winds, the rain, the water. Every aspect of life becomes part of divinity. It's an understanding that comes to me automatically the more I work with energy. And when I begin a healing, I don't use my power 
because my power could barely move a paper clip across the table. But I become an antenna that magnetically attracts that energy from the zero point field in the empty space between hard objects because that energy moves everywhere. Some people call that God. Some call it spiritual men. Some people call it chi. Some people have God knows what kind of names for it. But it's just energy. And we pull it in and we direct it because we have a gift that we have honed. Anybody has the capability of directing that energy. All it requires is some training. There is so little that is special about me, except that I have a heart that is dedicated to, to the work that I do, a desire to bring healing to others. You think that satisfies that question? I think it does. I think it does a great job of, of satisfying that question. And, you know, let, let's talk about, let's tie that into some of the other work there at the center, because, um, you know, as, as a weekly talk show, we try to bring various perspectives. I'm going to ask you the question that I ask of everyone who's come from a, um, what we might call a more traditionalist uh, spiritual path in the Abrahamic traditions. Um, having said what you just said, understanding what it is that you do in your work facilitating healing from within in, in the people who uh, who come to the Center for Vital Life Force Energy. Um, would you say, yes, sir, I know you're a, a, a retired uh, Catholic priest in the uh, independent Catholic movement, liturgical movement. Um, Jesus, uh, the Palestinian rabbi, um, was he a mage, a witch, a healer, um, or not? Considering that he spent so many years in Egypt, I'd say that he had many of Pharaoh's secrets. Wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. If he wasn't indeed a Pharaoh himself. We have a question coming in from uh, one of our viewers, Cleveland, Cleveland Goodshield, my uh, little brother out in Minnesota says, what do you guys think about telekinesis? And from your honest opinion, is it real energy or is it just a form of mind trickery? Good question. Uh, let me please attack this one because okay. it is an integral, telekinesis is an integral part of how I establish connection with a human being. I stand at the side of the person and they don't even understand what I'm doing. And I begin to push. As if, as if I was trying to push a refrigerator across the floor. And as I begin to move downward, they begin to move backward. And I can make the human body rest within its own aura. Totally imbalanced. Resting within its own aura. Or I can stand behind a person and I can point my fingers towards their lower back and move my fingers like this, and I can get them to move towards me, and they can't see what I'm doing, and they don't know what I'm doing, and I'm using telekinetic energy. Is it mind control? Definitely not. It is definitely, again, relying upon my ability to connect with the element of energy replete in the field that we call empty space. And interestingly, my power to do this can be outside of a room with a closed door and a wall between us. And I can do it if I am near a mountain range. Because the mountain range will provide me a greater concentration of energy to pull in. And so from another room with them not knowing what I'm doing and when I'm beginning, I can bend their body. I can make them teeter back into a position that they would normally fall in. And then I snap my fingers or clap my hands and they snap out of it and come upright again. And what's the purpose of that? 
Well, here comes the surprise of all surprises. Don't those who believe, excuse me. Sure. Don't those who believe in healing get the best? When I've been to human body, they believe. And it makes a real connection for you, I would imagine, uh, because that that uh, any like you said, it's not just the the belief in their mind. It would seem to me that uh, that when you make that kind of a connection, um, whether they they wittingly do so or not, the psychic connection then takes place because they've let down their walls, they've released the chaotic data that might stand between them and their healing. And now the way is clear for you to do what you have to do. We is froze. Sorry? Are you there? Ruh -ruh. You froze. Okay. If you can hear me, come on back. Uh, go ahead and close out and, and jump on back in. Um, if not, um, hopefully, hopefully it's you or it's, it's your side that is has frozen and not me, and that I have no idea that I've frozen. Um, so nobody else is hearing this. Um, Cleveland, if you're still watching, if you can hear me, go ahead and just drop a message in the um, in the comments, so I know that you can hear me or anyone else that's watching. Uh, our guest today on the show. Um, is the uh, uh, is the frozen? <laughs> oh, that's got to go the other way. The frozen uh, Reverend Robert Ray, um, founder of the uh, Center for Inner Wisdom in Fort Lauderdale, uh, and uh, uh, and the uh, leading one of the leading experts uh, in the field of using a, a, a metaphysical technology uh, for for healing and energy work technology uh, that is called. Um, vital life force energy. And, and uh, Robert has uh, uh, jumped off for one second. I think he's going to go ahead and reconnect with us. And, and while he's doing that, I want to thank you guys for spending time uh, with us today and remind you that if you have any questions, any comments, you can put them in the comments down below. And uh, as long as we're on the air, we'll share those some of those comments with our uh, viewers and try to answer those questions. Uh, our co-host, uh, Rafael Ray, will be back next week. Uh, he is actually at a speaking engagement today. There are some incredible things in addition to the uh, uh, the mercury retrograde that's causing our technology difficulties uh, today, but there are some incredible things, incredible shifts that are getting ready to take place. And when Raphael is back next week, we're going to talk a little bit about those things which begin uh, on tonight's new moon. Actually, it began in the shadow um, uh, about four or five days ago. But but the, the shift that's really beginning um, in in full measure uh, uh, tonight with the uh, the rise of the new moon. So uh, so guys, um, I'm I'm thinking that Robert may not be able to get back in. I want to thank him uh, for for spending time with us. We'll definitely have him back on another show. Um, and if you would like more information about the work that he does. Um, the best place to uh, to get that is either to look him up on Facebook or go to facebook.com forward slash Z point with an E at the end. Uh, and, and you can uh, find out more information uh, about the work that Robert does and about the uh, Center for Inner, uh, Inner Wisdom uh, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and uh, and some of the services that, that they offer. Guys, I want to kind of wrap up today um, by, by sharing with you something that... Um, that came up, uh, you know, over this past week, and and that um, I just want to reiterate again, since we have a little bit of of um, five minutes of free time here, and that is that you know I come from a tradition uh, that uh, that traces its roots back uh, to about the the uh, fourth or fifth century before the Common Era, and that same tradition in the fourteenth and fifteenth century had a, uh, a restoration movement that, that uh, um, uses the same word and in the, in the um, 70s or 80s, uh, maybe even the 90s. Um, we started to see in the um, English speaking world, we started to hear more about Svegaria uh, and, and uh, uh, the, the uh, Italian folk magic tradition um, began to, to reach kind of the, the pop culture 
Um, and and so I posted earlier this week that you know while while I have no real connection to that kind of pop culture version of Stregaria, um, which might uh, you know suit me well if I were um, if I owned a gift shop or or a store um, and needed to uh, be able to sell my books, um, my my tradition is is something that's older than that. Um, however, I, I want everyone to understand that whether it, you are involved in an ancient path or in a restoration of, uh, of an ancient path or an innovative new tradition, whether you consider your uh, metaphysical path to be a religion, whether you consider it to be a philosophy as I do mine, whether you consider it to be um, a science and, and a, a simple life study, each one of those paths, each one of those choices that you make is valid. Don't let anyone take that away from you. Don't let anyone convince you. I think Robert may actually be, be jumping back in. Um, don't let anyone convince you that you don't have a right to, uh, to be there, uh, that you don't have a right to, to speak your truth and walk your path. There we go, there's Robert again. Let's bring him back in. There you are. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. No worries. I, I was um, I was just wrapping up the show, but but uh, with you back, we've got uh, we've still got some time. So um, I just want to um, to thank you for for being here and tell us a little bit about the things that go on at the Center for Inner Wisdom and where you're located, um, so that some of the folks watching, um, you know, have have an opportunity. Oh, I hope you didn't freeze again. No. Okay, you're there. <laughs> um, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and mute my microphone while you're doing that because that might help boost your signal. Okay. So for instance, this evening at the center, we have gallery psychic mediumship readings with two very talented women. Uh, they will host a gallery with about fifteen to twenty people and each one will get a reading. I'm very careful to open. I tell them that this is not parlor trick. This is not done for entertainment purposes. It is done and it is a gift that comes through whatever source that wants to connect with them to answer the questions that challenge them here on earth and to take away their fear of death, that life is everlasting, that we are divine elements, and our life cannot be snuffed out. We may lose this flesh, we will, but life goes on. Audio gone. Yep, <laughs> forgot to turn the microphone back on. Um, Mercury is in fucking retrograde. That's all I got to say. Uh, it's been a crazy day. Guys, thanks for, for those of you that tune in. We, we recognize um, that the middle of the day um, is, uh, is tough for some folks to get here live. So if you happen to be watching the rebroadcast, um, then we welcome your comments. And, and I just want to thank you guys for, for, uh, uh, for your loyalty and for being here. Um, you know, we're reaching about 600 um, uh, views now per week, uh, per episode. And I couldn't be uh, happier between four and 600 and, uh, you know, help us get the word out there, continue to share this with the folks that you think, uh, might enjoy this or tag them in the comments below. Um, Robert Ray, I want to thank you, my brother, uh, for, uh, for those who don't know Robert and I, uh, and, and his partner, Paulie and, and, uh, uh, and uh, Jack and, and the whole, uh, so many people down involved with the um, Center for Inner Wisdom are folks that I've known for, uh, and there's Jack, I see Jack just uh, um, uh, sending us a heart for watching. Um, we've been family for 20, what, 24, 25 years now. And uh, it's yeah. exciting to see the journeys that, that um, uh, those that we care and love about take. Um, but it's exciting for me too to to see the journeys unfold of so many of you that are watching, and we thank you for sharing your stories with us. And Robert, we thank you for sharing yours. Um, at the end of this video uh, today, the the rebroadcast will be up 
within a couple of days, we'll have a uh, an archival footage on YouTube, uh, which is post production. It'll have a little more graphics and and uh, contact information, uh, which will appear right down here uh, for getting a hold of um, of Robert, finding out more about the work that he does. Um, and, and as always, we encourage you to watch the rebroadcasts on our own um, website, on our blog, which is interalchemy.online. Uh, on That's interalchemy.online. There's no .com there. Um, and guys, thanks so much for viewing. Robert, thank you so, so much. I can't wait to be back down there with you guys uh, sometime soon. It is a pleasure to have been here with you today. I will come back anytime you ask. I love my queer family. I love helping others. I love giving encouragement and support. All right, guys, thanks so much. As we say at the end of every single one of these broadcasts, we encourage you to stay in the moment, to be grateful for everything you've got, because if you can't be grateful for what you have now, there's no reason to believe you'll be any happier with more. And always remember, the best is yet to come. We'll talk to you soon.